Hey guys, it's Adam with webstarts.com. Thanks for tuning in. If it's your first time here, my channel is all about creating a website, blog, internet marketing, search engine optimization, and a whole lot more. Be sure to tap the subscribe button and click on the notification bell. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you some ideas about the content that you can put on your website. A lot of the times I get the question, what should I put on my website when people are trying to create one? It can be a little bit of kind of writer's block. They're not sure what to put out on their website. So in this video, I'm going to give you some basic ideas that you can use to uh, fill up your website with content. The first thing that you need to take into consideration is the home page. That's probably going to be the first page that people see when they come to your website. And there are studies that show that people will give about three to five seconds uh, for that page to load and then they'll scan the page very quickly and determine whether or not they came to the right place. And for that reason, one of the strongest recommendations I can make about your homepage is just to include a headline right across the top, sort of like a newspaper that says what your website's all about. So it should be real concise. So after somebody determines that they're on the right website or that they like the information, they're going to think in their head, okay, what do I do now? What do I do next? You want to provide a clear answer to that question. And we call that a call to action. So it's the answer to the question, what do I do next? That can be click on a button to shop on the online store. It might be place a phone call. It might be submit a form or subscribe to our blog. Whatever it is you're trying to get out of that website, you're going to want to make your primary call to action. So that's got to be a clear answer on your homepage. Hey, I like what I see here. What do I do next? You want to answer that question. Another thing that you should be including on your homepage are some of the features and benefits of your product service or information. This is you usually conveyed with icons or small images or bullets. You can just make a list view. Remember, people are going to be skimming your page, not reading paragraph after paragraph of text. That typically doesn't work. So you just want to highlight some of the big things that uh, you offer in terms of an advantage in the marketplace. So here's a good, good place to share things like what's the problem you solve? Um, how do you solve in a way that's faster, better, and cheaper than the competition? How are you different than your competitors? These are things that you would include in the features and benefits section of the home page. The about page is interesting. It's an opportunity for your audience or your site visitors to get to know a little bit more about you. So I always recommend that you put things on the about page that humanize you a little bit. And what I mean by that is maybe a founder story. That would be a few paragraphs that say, these are the events that took place that inspired me to start this business or this nonprofit organization or this club, whatever it is that your website is about you could share a little background story just let people know how you got into whatever it is that you're into. Another thing you can include are profile photos of prominent staff members or employees and then you can include little blurbs about some of their qualifications, some of their skills. It doesn't need to be as serious as a resume. You can do something where you share hobbies or fun interests or what their favorite color is. You can put whatever you want. You can really have fun and make that a creative outlet for you on the about page. The idea once again is just to get people to feel like there's a human behind that website. It's critical to winning the trust of your audience. The next page that every website should pretty much have is a contact page. When people go to a website, a lot of the times they just want to know where to go to get, get more information and they're going to scan the page for a contact link. And when they click on that, they should probably find things like your phone number, a form that they submit to contact you. I don't recommend publishing your email address on the contact page just because it tends to get spammed more. And also if you put a form on your page, also if you put a form on the page, you can automate the follow-up process, which is critical to streamlining your business. If you're a physical location and you want people to come in, then include your address there, maybe a map. And then, um, you know, anything else that is pertinent to contacting you. Another thing that people should be including on their website is some sort of social bar. Uh, that's like a little bar of icons that link to other places that you publish content on the web. So if you're publishing on YouTube like this here, or Instagram, or Facebook, or if you've got a Snapchat, or a TikTok, or, in, or Twitter, you want to include links to those things. Your website acts as a centralized hub for all of those other web presences. 
and having links to them from your website will help drive traffic to those places if those are better outlets for conveying certain parts of information or building relationships. Now, obviously there's a lot of other pages you can build for your website. If you're an online store, you want to add an entire store. If you want a blog, you should be adding a blog to your website. They will give you a chance to write articles on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, whatever is convenient for you or whatever makes sense for your model. And another popular idea that a lot of people do is they put links to a gallery or photos page, but it's just a page dedicated to sharing photos. That that's helpful if you're selling something aesthetic or if you're talking about something that's aesthetic on your website. Also, it's another opportunity to express your work. So if you're a kitchen remodeler and you have some before and after photos or you do makeovers and you have some before and after photos, those make great pages for your website. All right, so those are a few ideas. Hopefully you found some inspiration there for your website. As always, be sure to visit webstarts.com to create your very own free website, online store or blog. And don't forget to tap the subscribe button and ring the notification bell on this channel. Thanks for watching.